Here we are, long weekend again. Been working pretty hard, sort of. <laughs> yeah, plenty of uh, wheel bearings getting done at the moment, that's for sure. So, uh, me and the missus have come away up to our favourite little spot here. Um, Gonna have a try for some cherubins probably tomorrow. See if there's any in this system. But uh, not a bad spot to spend a long weekend, eh? And um, Ren's cooking spare ribs, rice and veggies. How good does that look? Got some sort of sauce on there. Sun's starting to go down. Now we tied. Pretty good spot. Good morning all, bloody beautiful morning here, that's for sure, nice and cool last night, got a few chirping, not as many as that other spot, but I got a good feed for lunch. Very nice spot, eh? Whole place to ourselves. Time for another cup of tea, and we're having bacon and egg jackals for this morning. And we're going to be cooking up a uh, leg of lamb in the camp oven. So we'll show you the way we do it. Guess what? Between the pair of us, we didn't bring any bloody knives. <laughs> Fancy coming away on a trip with no knives. We've got steak knives, that's about it. All good. We'll make it work.
All right, let's have a look at this. Oh, look at that. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, So it's egg, bacon, uh, tomato sauce, pepper and salt. sitting around feel like something to do we're gonna make a um, what are we gonna make we're gonna make a damper of some sort I reckon uh, a savory one uh, ham cheese tomato pepper and salt might even throw an egg in it but first we need to get the camp oven set up so we need to dig a bit of a hole there and, and a bit of a windbreak what do we need? We need all made up there. Oh. Oh no. Shabo. Rightio, we've had the fire going for a while. We've got some bloody nice coals in there. That's the secret. It's the it's the coals. So you want to kind of keep your heat regulated. So I know you would. And uh, get some nice coals happening. So we've got a quite a strong breeze blowing down the river at the moment. So I've just made a uh, bit of a shelter there. So I'm going to drop some coals in there. And just start preheating the camp oven. Getting it nice and warm. And then while that's getting uh, nice and warm. We'll um, make this up. Long-handled shovel. Of course, you all knew that, didn't you? So get some nice coals in there. Oh, there's some beauties in there. Do that. Go and grab old mate. Oh, fire gloves for that. Camp oven has been sitting next to that fire, so no doubt it's probably a little warm already. Alright. Probably won't need that trivet. get that uh, happening. Uh, don't have your camp, don't cook like right on your fire. I see a lot of guys they're trying to put their camp oven in the fire here. It's, it's too bloody hot. So you get, just need to have your camp oven away from the main fire and then keep, keep this one stoked up so you've got plenty of coals. That seems to be the secret for us. Uh, of course where you go, depending on what sort of wood you got, is how good a coals you're going to get. Uh, at the moment we're just using all this driftwood, river wood, so it's not that good a wood. There is a couple of nice bits there that are, that are, uh, are nice and thick, so they're not too bad. All right, I'll get this uh, ingredients ready for this uh, savoury damper. Damper. Hey, we're going to make a damper. It's going to be a uh, savoury damper. Not all of you are going to probably be into it. You're going to go, what? You're doing what? This is what we're doing. We've got a little bit of cheese, a bit of chopped up ham. What do you call that one? <laughs> Tomato. We've got a stock cube. We've got an egg, flour, pepper and salt, a little bit of butter, a bit of water. And, of course, we're going to put beer in it. Right, let's get into it. So about, uh, I don't know, this much. There's about a cup. Bit of the old butter. Now there's no rules here. You can do whatever you like. As long as it tastes good. About that much butter. Your egg. Uh, 
and just throw all your ingredients in. Over the years we've made fruit ones, all sorts of different ones. Whatever you're in the mood for I suppose. A little bit of salt. The old pepper if you can get it out. That's enough. And chicken stock cube. Now for a bit of moisture, just a bit of beer. That's enough. And a tad bit of water. That's probably enough. See how that goes when that mixes up. Now we've had the camp oven going for a while, so it's all preheated. So that should be just right when we go to throw this in. Now this is just a small one. Renee doesn't really get into savoury dampers. Do you Nah. Set up. Now it's a little bit runny, so we can fix that. Just a little bit more flour. You just want it so you can sort of pat it into like a. So you got some sort of control on it, but it's not just a runny pancake. All right, I see how that's starting to thicken up. Nice. I think I'll go a little bit more flour, just get it a little bit more firmer. Yeah, that should be that sort of good. See how that's nice and firm now? We'll be able to get some control over it and pat it into a... Yeah, I'm happy with that. Sort of see that? Give a good stir up. Uh, all these sorts of ones, the fruit ones, you can put marshmallows in and make them sweet for like a dessert. Kids love doing them. You can put chocolate in it. No rules. Whatever you want. Right, right. Now the other thing I like to do is a little bit of flour in the bottom of the camp oven. Don't forget to put your glove on. Just so it doesn't stick, eh? And then just pour it in. Everyone's got their own way of doing it. No rules, as long as it works, it tastes good. I've got that in there. Now, depending on how hot your coals are, is how long it's going to take. So, just keep checking it. on the top. All right, we'll give that uh, 10 minutes and we'll have a gander at it and see how she's looking. Right, I'm going back to my beer. Right, it's been about 10 minutes, we just better have a check. See where we're at. Now the trick is here is not to get the coals inside. So just do a little scratch around. Yeah, that's looking great.
not burnt on the bottom and um, just starting to get brown on top. So a few more coals on top, probably no more than about five minutes and I reckon we should be done. So again, don't drop the coals inside. It all depends on how many beers you had and how many coals you get in there. Nice hot ones on top. Get another beer and have a couple of sips. I reckon five minutes and that'll be uh, pretty much sorted for that one. We'll check it in five. See you then. Right, oh, that's been five minutes or two beers, however, whatever comes first. <laughs> we better check it. We've got some fair old heat on the top there. Crispy, crispy, crispy. Oh yeah, not too bad. So that's all. Nice. So we just let that cool down for a bit. Um, no, that'll do. I was kind of, I was thinking of browning that bottom a little bit more, but that's okay. Right, we'll just leave that sit there for, I don't know, five minutes or three beers, whatever comes first. <laughs> Alrighty, time for a feed. So that's been about five minutes or four beers. Four beers. I reckon I should keep my jokes to myself, eh? Let's have a carve of this up. So have a listen. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's hope it's not raw inside. <laughs> Feels good to me. Oh. There you go. See that cheese all melted through there? Feels good to me. So we're doing pretty good without an offering. Now you can put whatever you want on this. No, it's better if it goes on there. What could you put on there, right? A relish or Put that back in there, but that wouldn't be good, would it? That would crack at it. Oh. It's so fluffy. Heaps of flavour. And crispy on the outside. You serve that up to anybody with a cold beer, they're going to love you. Right over. Next one's coming up is prawn, no, cherubin cocktails. Renny's doing it. Aren't you, Ren? Yep. <laughs> She's getting a bit shy on the camera, right? Anyway, I'll be there to help. Um, and we're going to try something different. We're going to put a bit of vinegar in the water. Some people say, and it's a Queensland thing, I think. You know what they're like. Too many cane toad licking. Sorry, Queenslanders. Just joking. They reckon it takes, put a bit of vinegar in the water, they reckon it takes the muddy out of it. But um, in all our rivers here, I don't know whether they're, they're clean. I can't see them being any cleaner than bloody Queensland water. It's bloody good water over there. Um, 
we never get the, the, the muddy taste here in our cherubim. They, you can just rip them out, rip them in a pot. I always put salt in the water, so I don't know whether that does anything or not, but I don't get any muddy taste in my cherubim here. Um, so we're gonna do that next. We'll have a couple more beers and uh, we'll, we'll do that for lunch today. Right off, catch up. try something different. This is what people have been telling me. We don't get muddy chirp in here, but they reckon put a bit of vinegar in your water. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see what it tastes like. If there's any change, I'll, t I'll let you know. Anyway, I don't know how much to put in. Let's put that much in. And then with anything that comes out of the uh, fresh water, I always put salt in it. Or oh, same with anything that comes out of the ocean, so crabs, stuff like that. You've got to add salt. Don't put anything seafood into fresh water. Because it just won't be happy. So about how much? About that much. So did you see that? That's probably what, a cup and a half. Alright. These have been euthanized. That's a big word for me. So better known as put into ice slurry water and they're all dead, so they're not gonna feel any pain. And there's that many. Is that about a kilo? Boiling water. Shoot in there, eh? Show them the boiling water. Oh, it's boiling. boiling. Don't, go, don't put your hand in there. Won't take long for these guys. We'll just wait for that to come back to the boil again, and then we'll rip them out. All right, we just grabbed some ice. Precious ice, by the way. But we don't want to stick the cherubin straight in there. We need to put a bit of salt in there. Uh, always carry shitloads of salt. Makes the water colder too. Look, I can hear it cracking. A little bit of water. And you end up with a nice ice slurry. Because we want to rip these cherubins straight out of the salty water. And, but we want to cool them down. We've only been in there for bed. Oh yeah, that'd make a penguin happy. Sure. Right, let's zip over here. Oh, and if you haven't got one of them, maybe go and to your local Chinese restaurant. No, not your restaurant, because that'd be stealing. Chinese, what would it be? Um, retail store. Retail store. Get one of these. Um, Have a look in here, guys. They are ready. They've only been in there, oh, they come to the boil, so they've been in there five minutes after the boil got boiled. The boil was boiling. Oh, that's nice. I think there's, there's more than a couple of uh, prawn cocktails there, any? Oh, 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 Let's go there. Drop them in there, that'll cool the temperature down straight away. You don't want them cooking all the way. I'll just slip over there and grab those other ones.
All right, we'll leave them sit there for about five minutes or, I don't know, six beers. That'll be good. And then uh, Renee can take over the show. <laughs> Better put some clothes on. So, a little bit of lettuce in your gnarly prawn cocktail glasses that you want to be very careful with um, when you're going traveling. But nothing else works as good. I've tried a few things, but the glass ones, I don't know. You eat with your eyes, don't you? I don't know. We chopped up some lettuce. A lot of people put giant leaves in there. Yeah, maybe it might look good, but you can't use them unless you want to grab a whole giant leaf and try and put that in your mouth. So I don't like it. So. Dice up your lettuce. Cherubin over there. And we've got a secret sauce that no one's ever heard of. Bit of a luxury of having your very nice prawn cocktail glasses out in the bush. So how did you stop them from getting broken? Not from the sea tail. Doesn't that look good? Yes, please. I'm going for that. Now yeah, you can put chili in your mix. You can do all sorts of things. How, how do you like it? You just like the normal sauce. And put a lemon. Look at that. You want for nothing. Alright, bit of garnish. Good job, Ren. starting to head down we're gonna um, get this roast on uh, I like these coals these are pretty good ones I, I sort of know what I'm doing with them uh, so I think we're good we won't we need the trivet because we're gonna put the whole lot in so we don't need any of that that's not hot so you don't need your glove all right well I'll get the camp oven going and uh, and then we'll load him up in about an hour, I reckon. And you've got yourself a nice roast. So there's a nice piece of shoulder there. Uh, with a bit of rosemary, pepper and salt. And uh, yeah, and we've got a little bit of garlic infused oil there. Uh, where is it? There it is. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, pumpkins and, you know, all the prop stuff. So have your fire separate, as you know. And there it is over there. It's preheated and it's just beautiful at the moment. So anyway, we'll bung it on and uh, sit back. Uh, 
That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to put the potatoes in here. I'll leave it 10 minutes. I'm going to turn that. Come into the Kimberleys. Now's a bloody awesome time. Like June, July. It's my favourite time. It's just after the wet season. Oh, we're going to go and have a little bit of a paddle. Now, technically, guys, this is saltwater crocodile country here. Yeah? How do we know that? Because we went paddling a canoe all the way up that river, probably about another five to even ten k's up there, way up there, and we seen saltwater crocodiles up there, big ones. So as as Viking as that looks to go jumping in there and going for a swim, don't even let your dogs go near it. But we're going to go up here in the rock pools up here. So as long as you can see the bottom, and there's no deep dark water. And you've had a proper bloody look that's the only time you go in the water otherwise you'll go missing so we're going to go right up in there so oh, we reckon it's safe <laughs> don't go swimming out there oh and the water's very clear too so we can see we can see in there as long as you can see, you're all right. And it's kind of warming up too, because right across there, that whole water up, you can see up the front there, is all shallow. It's only about ankle deep for about oh, 250 metres up there. It's all just rock. So you find yourself a nice swimming hole like this. It's not very deep, you can see the bottom. And that's all you need to have a wash and a cool off. And the water's nice and warm too because it's coming off these rocks. So this is as deep as it goes until you get right up there. Alright now, we're gonna go for a swim. Okay. I think I might even get in this time. It's been a bit cold for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not real brave when it comes to cold water. old girl's seen a few wet seasons this would all be underwater how's the patterns in that I don't know if you guys can see it the patterns in the timber look awesome we're the only one 
ones here. Too good. Imagine the places that people get uh, with their private helicopters. <laughs> A bit lucky, you guys. that was a bit different a bit of cooking hey if you enjoyed that um, please give us a thumbs up um, and subscribe oh, and ring the bell and you'll be notified of the next mission we've got plenty more coming up this year um, I actually don't know what we're doing next but um, no doubt we'll come up with some sort of plan all right until next time I'll catch you all up see you